Awesome, it's recording now. Hey, today we are joined uh, by Gustavo. Gustavo runs a couple of businesses down in Orlando, Florida. Uh, one of them being a football academy for kids, uh, or as we call it in Europe, soccer academy. Um, and, uh, um, and another one being an upcoming real estate venture Gustavo is getting into. Gustavo uh, happened to interact with us and is one of the early customers for Mom and Pop Hub. Uh, we had a good conversation and we want to use this time to thank Gustavo, give him a chance to introduce himself uh, and his business uh, and ask you some questions uh, as rapid fire questions throughout uh, today's session. So Gustavo, if you have a moment, would you mind introducing yourself to our audience and helping them understand about yourself and the businesses you are currently or planning to run in future? Certainly, Varum. Uh, before him, I wanted to thank you for allowing me to be uh, part of Mom and Pop Hub. Um, I really highly appreciate it. Um, thank you for that. Uh, by the way, uh, that's a pretty awesome application you have there. Um, and, and, and I'm sure that, that it's going to grow tremendously. Seriously. Um, a little bit about me, yeah. Varum. Um, I'm actually um, an, Im an immigrant. I came from uh, Colombia, South America, when I was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, when I came to this country, I actually passed through Mexico. Okay. And I passed through the border of Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, so they call us the wet man. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, when I, when I arrived here, I actually arrived in um, New York and went and lived for 11 years in New Jersey, Morristown, New Jersey, okay. where I graduated um, from high school. Okay. Um, it was, those, those years were pretty hard, mm -hmm. very hard for me, for my mother. Uh, we used to live in a basement, and um, I was bullied throughout high school. It, it, it was a rough time, mm -hmm. uh, but um, but again, you know, like like all of this, I take it as a learning experience. Sure. Um, and when I graduated, I certainly started working like any other person out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I found a job at nine to five, uh, but I, I I just didn't see myself in, in this environment. I, I, I didn't see myself for the next 35, 40 years working a nine to five job. Sure. So my entrepreneurial spirit, um, you know, started burning, burning inside. And, and then um, about 10 years ago, we opened up a transportation company in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. And this company um, actually uh, within the first two, three years, um, it, it became really successful. Uh, we started generating, you know, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. Uh, in the beginning, so everything was was extremely good. I'm going to tell you the reason why I talk about past tense. Um, then uh, we open up uh, uh, a sports organization, mm -hmm. which is My Soccer Academy. Sure. And and started, you know, started with nine players. Uh, right now, we have a little bit more than four hundred. Uh, we started with one location. Now we have 10 locations. Right. And about two years, two years and a half, give or take, uh, my wife and I, we started a, a real estate investment company. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, thank God everything is going well. Uh, our real estate uh, our portfolio has, have, have grown to $1.5 million. Okay. And, and it's been, you know, it's just like, it's te teamwork. Right. You know, my wife and I, we've been working really, really hard, uh, you know, focused, dedicated, very disciplined. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, we take it, you know, brick by brick, one step at a time. Yeah, no. What an amazing story to start off this uh, conversation and the series we have to learn about the stories of, you know, small businesses across the country and... Uh, as an immigrant, personally, it inspires me to hear that story. And a lot of times, you know, I have a chance to interact with people from different walks of life. And certainly, you know, we, we do have that inclination to constantly keep striving and trying to push our boundaries uh, to see what's out there and always be having that hunger. So 
great to have that kind of story as a testament of you know how you never gave up you had certain um, you know setbacks in your childhood with the bullying incidents at school and other things uh, going on and you kept your focus uh, determination and hard work and luckily you have a partner in your wife who is uh, matching your energy as well as uh, this uh, constant determination to keep pushing things um, and seeing how every single day unfolds so great inspiration Gustavo that's you know I think that's going to be a very big inspiration for um, I would say you know immigrants as well as non-immigrants when you know people sometimes get setbacks and that sort of holds them back to see that, okay, is there anything after the setback? So great comeback after all this, uh, you know, all these setbacks and how you are uh, at this position with multiple locations of the soccer academy and uh, now the real estate business you're uh, running with your wife. So good to hear that. Um, I would like to learn a little more um, in terms of where uh, I know you have different businesses you've run right from transportation to soccer academy uh, and now real estate. Uh, what was your inspiring factor in let's just start off with uh, picking up transportation, then real estate, uh, then soccer academy? Uh, what made you inspired to follow these avenues when you could have picked up any other avenue for that matter? That's actually a very, a really good question. Um, so I'll tell you from experience, uh, we don't have a magic ball, mm -hmm. meaning, you know, oh, tell the magic ball, which, you know, niche, which company should I start? You know, like it comes down to, to your, your spirit, your entrepreneurial spirit. Mm -hmm. Varum, I got to tell you this. A lot of people, they, they, they want to be entrepreneurs but there's a word out there and it says they, they are, they are, they want the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial wannabe, mm -hmm. meaning they think they can be an entrepreneur, but they can. I'm going to tell you the reason why being an entrepreneur is not as easy as people may think it is. Mm -hmm. um, being an entrepreneur like yourself, like other people uh, uh, out there, like myself, it requires a lot of sacrifices, late nights, early mornings. It will require, uh, you know, an extremely, um, you know, self-discipline. Right. You have to be consistent. You have to be dedicated. You have to be laser focused. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you need to be a warrior. And the reason why is because not every battle you're going to win. Right. Which means that you open up one business and that, me that business, you might think that that's going to be the one. But guess what? All of a sudden something happens and you're going to have to close that business. Take a look at what happened to, to Walt Disney. Mm -hmm. He went bankrupt like seven times. I don't even know how many times. Right. And guess what? He never gave up. Gave so up. Not, not giving up is such an important virtue mm -hmm. of an entrepreneur. Right. And, and, and so to answer your question, you know, like, believe it or not, it's, it's just crazy. You just start, you know, like personally, I love starting businesses. Mm -hmm. This is like one of the things that, that, that inspires me, that motivates me, that, that keeps me going is starting businesses. So right. I'll tell you this, when we open up, okay, before we open up the transportation company, my wife and I, we, I don't even know how many businesses we had. Mm -hmm. You know, we opened up a magazine. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we started in a multi-level marketing companies. Like, man, your life, my life, Herbalife, you know, Amway, like whatever. Like all of those lives, we did them all. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we worked for different companies. We started different companies. And, and Unfortunately, or fortunately, I really don't know because you got to learn. See, you learn from, from, from everything you do, mm -hmm. right? So it's not a matter, it's not a, a matter of losing. It's right. a matter of learning. Mm -hmm. What did I do that didn't work? How can I do it better? How, like I took this route. 
okay, next time I'm not going to take that route because that route didn't help me at all. I need to do it this way. So you start getting better and better and better. And because of that reason, I really want to encourage. So this is like a voice of encouragement to all of those entrepreneurs, all of those that are going to be watching this video, all of those that are, that are going to be, you know, uh, that are going to be part of, of, of your application, mom and pop hub, you know, like, like all of those people, my voice of encouragement is never give up and try whatever you want. Right. Just, just try, go out there and just do it. A lot of people, they say, Oh, I want to put a business. I want to put a, you know, my own business, but, but they, they always talk about the, their business, their business idea, but they never do it. Right. I think is, uh, you know, one of the things we learn, and I have personally failed in one startup before this, and one of the biggest point I learned um, was uh, at that point, how much time we were investing in strategy, research, and uh, not actually learning by doing it. So we took a to year to get to go to market. And by the time we got that technology out there, uh, the landscape had changed and it's nothing to do with technology. We can say things are moving fast with technology era these days, but it's just a general learning by execution is the biggest virtue. You have to constantly say that every single day you're learning things, even if you don't get to document or other things. And that's, you know, very valuable point that you have to keep trying um, and learning by doing and executing is one of those traits of entrepreneurship, uh, which lasts you forever. And eventually you do crack the code, even if, you know, you don't know how you cracked it. Um, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's the beauty of that whole journey. I think I'm hearing from you and I personally also relate, uh, to that side of things. And, Absolutely. With, I think there was, uh, with mom and pop hub, we certainly had, um, you know, a lot of corporate career we went through over, you know, my decade of working in an industry uh, here in US, mainly on the IT side, where I wanted to help those people who have that spirit without necessarily uh, perhaps the technology or marketing or other areas which they don't really want to get into as much as other you know bigger corporations might have dollars to spend on so that vision along with learning from you know the first startup sort of drove us to say that we're not going to be perfect on day one but what it's important is start learning by doing and constantly keep improving trying to get to that final vision uh, based on customer feedback. So absolutely, you are dead on with that particular point. Uh, the next area, I guess, uh, for me, I know this was before we started this call, uh, you had this uh, very interesting phrase you put forward and I asked you to remember that when I asked you again. But I'm very interested for me to hear COVID scenarios. That is one of the biggest setbacks uh, you know, we're starting to hear small businesses of different kinds are facing difficulties of reality of customers, perhaps, you know, not having this, that, that much foot traffic, etc. cetera. So um, how are you handling as uh, this particular pandemic is hitting us on every day? And what would be your advice uh, on a practical as well as philosophical level to entrepreneurs who want to see the light at the end of the tunnel to have that bright future after COVID passes us. Definitely, of course. So this is what I can tell everybody, Varun. Work hard, never give up. It's simple. It, that, that's pretty much my formula. I'll tell you the reason why. See, a lot of people, because of COVID-19, they, they step back and I'm, in, I'm gonna include not only the entrepreneurs, I'm gonna include the whole business sector and the employees sector. So everybody is gonna come along right here because not everybody is, it has a business, not everybody's an entrepreneur. Those that are gonna be watching this video, uh, uh, this message is for you guys as well. 
So those empl employees and business owners. So what I can tell everybody is the same thing that I've been telling people all over the, like I have an Instagram page of uh, close to like 10,000 followers. I tell them the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, recently I was interviewing a radio station. I tell them the same thing. Mm -hmm. Work hard, never give up. Sure. Why? Because this is what I heard. A lot of people, no, I'm just waiting because the government is going to give this, this check for everybody that became unemployed. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just going to be waiting for my boss to call me back. No, I'm just going to be waiting. See, see, people, see, it's all about your mindset. People are going to be waiting. Waiting for what, Varun? Mm -hmm. Waiting for what? I'm going to tell you what happened to us, talking about my wife and I, in our businesses. Number one, within this two to three months recession uh, or, 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 or quarantine or whatever, COVID-19 thing, we were able to open up more businesses. Oh, now, wow. listen to this. My real estate business, we have an investment company. Mm -hmm. But guess what? We were working with other people giving us properties, right? Now, what we did is we opened a wholesaling company, which mm -hmm. means we find our own properties as well. Sure. Now, we find them for, for us to buy them or for us to sell those properties that we find. Mm -hmm. So that's one business that we open up. Second business that we open up is we knew that people, they, they still invest. P uh, 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 investors out there, they still investing, mm -hmm. investing. And this is a great opportunity for people to invest. Right. Why? Because we find properties for 40, 50, 60% less than market value. Mm -hmm. So the second business we opened, we knew that people needed money, Right because they wanted to invest, but they didn't want, they didn't want to invest 100% of the, of the cost of the property. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we opened up a lending company. We became brokers. We have over 47, 47 lenders nationwide. So we became brokers. Now investors that are looking to invest money, they're giving us a call so we can lend them the 80%, the, the 70% that they need in order for them to buy that property. So yeah. those were two businesses that we opened in this quarantine uh, uh, time. Wow. When other people mm -hmm. waited, mm -hmm. they waited for a check to come. They waited for, for the president to, to sign on that bill for more checks, for the PPP thing. For, for they, they waited and waited and waited. Get, guess what, my friend? Like I don't like to wait for anybody. That's awesome. I really don't. So my biggest advice on, 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 on everybody out there that, is, that, are, that, that are listening to this, to this conversation, Varun, is don't wait. Work hard. Never give up. Mm -hmm. Act, man. Become an action taker. Right. That's what it is. No, that's a very good inspiration. I think certainly did not, you know, sometimes we have responses pre-configured in our head of what we are about to hear in such conversations, but you blew it out of the park. I ah, no, man, I, no. I don't think I have ever in this time, I have heard this kind of, uh, you know, ability to pivot and find new opportunities um, as an inspiration out there. So I really applaud you. Um, and I can see, you know, people really blow, getting really, uh, inspired by the fact that uh, I think one of the critical points you said was don't wait. Uh, that's, you know, a bigger area where sometimes I would say that, uh, you know, not only people, even I have, you know, some guilt on some areas I perhaps waited too long on. So um, no, absolutely. That is, you know, with your results of the lending company and everything and how you improvise kind of speaks for that pattern that you're constantly hunting for opportunities. It doesn't have to be another location or, you know, soccer academy. You're very versatile as a uh, person and entrepreneur that you are uh, hungry for finding the right gap in uh, what is required in market as opposed to, you know, being in certain area and being in that lane itself. So, Really inspirational to hear how you handled the COVID time and your words of wisdom of how people should not wait. 
um, and keep pushing themselves forward. Uh, tell me a little more about, you know, the customers you have to work with. I know you mentioned just now about the lenders. Uh, do you get every day to interact with customers at Soccer Academy, be it kids? I look at your Facebook page sometimes and I'm starting to be like, wow, man, this is good that they're starting to get kids back again. And I know you did a lot of good work for the local community, which is a big part of small businesses that, uh, you know, it's not just about making money. It's about helping the uh, community grow and keeping the people who are less fortunate in mind as we grow as ourselves as well. So um, a few areas I just, I know both of us don't get time to talk too often, but certainly Facebook feed of your soccer academy helps me to keep connected with you. So, um, so I, I'm just curious about your interactions with customers uh, and any memorable interactions with customers and how um, you know, you have helped the larger community at this time, uh, being philanthropic nature as well as entrepreneurship nature. Certainly. So to answer the first question, um, uh, in regards to customers, um, you know, I'm going to take this opportunity as well to tell all of those entrepreneurs, those, those business owners that customer service um, has to be your, one of your biggest priorities. One, whether, whether you have a customer that is, that is buying you know, a $50 thing, service or product, or those customers that are on a recurring basis buying you of over $1,000, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what, what I, see a customer is a customer. And that has been one of our, you know, one of our business models. We take care of our customers. See, if you go to Facebook, go to Google, and you do a research of our soccer academy, mm -hmm. let me tell you, we have like a 4.8 or 4.7 star. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, even though we are one of the newest sports academy in the, in the, in the area, we have more reviews than anybody else. We have obviously more stars than anybody, anybody else. Mm -hmm. And we have more locations than anybody else. Why? is purely customer service. Um, in regards to, to what's going on right now in the, in the customer service that we are applying in this new, you know, new time, I call it new era, because sure. COVID-19 changed the expectation of a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. What are we doing right now? Okay, number one is we are taking care of, of our customers, which means that we are following the protocol of the local government. Mm -hmm. So the local government, they're saying that we cannot have more than 10 people uh, per area, per section, per group, then that's what we're following. Now, of course, is gonna, it, it, obviously right now, we have more coaches than before mm -hmm. because we can only have nine players per session plus the coach, that will be 10 people. So nine players, coach, 10 in total. Um, so what we need to do is we need to invest more money in getting more coaches to teach a small group. Mm -hmm. For us, it doesn't matter because what we always think about is what, you know, like what type of service are we providing? Mm -hmm. We're, we need to let the parents know how we are handling everything. All of our coaches, they need to wear masks. Mm -hmm. All of our staff, uh, uh, all of our, uh, uh, you know, soccer materials, implements, tools, and everything, they need to be disinfected before and after, mm -hmm. right? Um, there's, there's an area that parents cannot pass because only players will be allowed to enter the field. Mm -hmm. so, we're, so, and all of this is customer service. Why? Because parents are watching. They're looking on, on, you know, how organized we are, how we are following the protocol, how we are doing everything. You see? So, so that's, 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 what, that's what we're doing right now. So that's the first question that I wanted to answer. The second thing is you got to give back. You really have to give back. I mean, I understand that a lot of people say, no, I don't have money. I, I don't have money neither. Because a lot of people, oh, no, but Gustavo, you just mentioned that you have a portfolio of 1.5. Yeah, man, I, I mentioned that. But I didn't say that that belongs, that money is from the bank. Mm -hmm. 
You see what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. a, lot, a lot of people think that, that, uh, that because this guy has buildings and this and that, he's rich. No. Mm -hmm. No, he, he, he has loans. Right. He, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So that, that's how it is. So you got to give back. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like my wife and I, we, we're privileged. Yes, we are. Uh, uh, th thank God we have, we have received many, many blessings from him. Mm -hmm. And we saw that people needed help. Right. So what we did was, look, look what we did. We, everything, I, I told my wife, I said, I said, my love, why don't we start a fundraising? Mm -hmm. so, so we can inspire others to help. Absolutely. So, so what we did is, boom, we started a fundraising and all we, all we contribute was a hundred dollars, nothing else, mm -hmm. just a hundred dollars and the willingness from the bottom of our hearts to help our local community. Absolutely. Now watch this. Everything evolved, Varum, it evolved. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we started we started and we sent it to our family members and, and people that we knew. And all of a sudden we raised like, like three or $400. Right. With that, we went to the supermarket and we bought groceries and we started our first foot drive. Mm -hmm. Somebody saw it. Somebody saw the foot drive and, and called me. Hey, Gustavo, I really like what you're doing. What are you thinking about? When are you going to do your second foot drive? And I say, I would love to do it as soon as tomorrow, but we need to continue to wait for people to donate. Absolutely. And then this guy, he's a business owner. He said, you know what, Gustavo? Don't even worry about it. Let's do the second foot drive and I'll put everything. Mm -hmm. He invested like a thousand dollars, Varun. Absolutely. So we did our second foot drive. I, I and then... No, really quick, to cut the story short, we did the third foot drive. I think we did the third or fourth foot drive. Overall, we helped a little bit more than 250 families with yeah. food baskets. Right. And everything started with just a hundred bucks and a willingness from our heart to help the local community. Varum. So again, it, you, you don't need a lot of money. You just need to have the willingness to help. That's yeah, it. I was just so inspired by, you know, this balance of drive to constantly keep innovating and growing with new opportunities and also helping communities, which is a common trait I hear from, um, you know, small business owners across the country that they, um, you know, they want to grow at all costs, have this impeccable customer service, but at no point they forget that they don't want their customers to be thinking that they're just numbers. They want to know them by first name basis. And those are, you know, kind of qualities which I'm hearing from you, um, not just from a customer service, but also giving back uh, by having these foot drives. I would, the reason I interrupted you a moment back was just to kind of encourage you to share the links, uh, which of course I'll post it as a part of, you know, the outreach, uh, so that if you are still having those foot drives, uh, we'd love to make sure that people are aware uh, on how to keep contributing it nationally wherever they are. So absolutely a great story. And I think we need more of these inspirational, positive stories. Uh, my last point for today, I don't know, both of us can talk for days and days if we have. I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, my last point for the day is, uh, I know as a tech entrepreneur, I'm very interested in technology. So, um, and that's where, you know, we are going to focus mom and pop hub, trying to not be Google, Facebook, but more of um, that face of small businesses to give them uh, power of technology. So I'm very eager with COVID. And even if we don't talk about COVID times, how has technology shaped your business? And how will technology shape your business and its growth in future? That, that, that's actually a really good question. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage all of the listeners to please get into technology. 
and attach technology with their business so both can work together uh, and, and, and it's gonna be a beautiful explosion. I'm gonna tell you the reason why. Uh, we started adapting technology on my first business, which is the transportation business. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we developed uh, the software, uh, a, a reservation system software. And all we did was do uh, a really good search engine marketing. And so we did search engine marketing and we attach it to our software and that's how we started generating seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay. So it was just that simple technology that we attach. Mm -hmm. For the soccer uh, academy, what we did is we adapted two type, two two softwares. Again, technology. One was a CRM. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have a CRM before, so every time we got a phone call, is yes yes sir how can i help you the location and we gave the, the 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 person all the information but we never capture that customer mm -hmm. now what our customer service uh, 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 call center is doing is when they got somebody on the phone hi sir how are you may i have your name they write their name throughout the conversation they got the email the the, the phone number and then ah oh, okay so you're interested in this particular location boom the location now we have a customer to 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 advertise to to start sending it sending them emails drop emails and you see what I'm, like a funnel like a sales funnel yeah so we adapted that that technology and also we adapted a technology for soccer training sessions with coaching uh, uh, coaching uh, management why because now we can sur supervise the coach yeah right and we know that they're following the soccer session that we told them to follow yeah so we adapted this technology in there and for the real estate we have the same crm mm -hmm. crm works so beautiful i gotta tell you yeah. i've never used them before believe it or not but now that i'm using them is such a great piece of technology, piece of software to start using for your business. So I do encourage businesses to adopt this technology, uh, you know, any type of technology into their business. How do I see technology for the future? Varun, let me tell you, I would love to either start a business in the technology world or be part of a, of a, of a business within the technology world right. i truly believe that technology is you know it's gonna be super powerful in the years to come yeah no i think that's certainly an area with you know i think there has been some push where businesses who didn't even have a website are starting to you know say we need this today not yesterday or need yep. to think about it so there's time to act on it so that's been a positive aspect where COVID has brought about that perception change in a natural way and be with human nature, maybe there's an aspect of survival which triggers people to have, you know, accelerated thinking to adoption for things may, they may have been opposed to earlier. So certainly, you know, that certainly plays a role. What I, what I would want to make sure is, you know, it seems like you're very inspired by the CRM you use do drop me a note after this call because yeah. these tips I want to share with people uh, from a tactical point of view also so that they know that you know certain product which you are very impressed with is working out great for them so I'll follow up with you separately or you can shoot me an email uh, sure. with some of these details and we can make sure we have that uh, as the side notes of the entire conversation no, I think Gustavo, I'm in a, uh, I'm very inspired by this call. Um, and I know both of us are good talkers to be there forever. If we have to keep talking each other, we can make um, a, 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 a podcast together. <laughs> absolutely. I, I don't think that's a bad idea, but I'm so new. And this was one of those areas that, you know, it was, uh, I kept thinking, thinking that, okay, let me hire this. Let me hire that. But then I was like, we're spending too much time again, falling in the trap of trying to perfect it. And let's find people. We had a comfortable first conversation like yourself. 
and uh, you know, even if we don't do the best job of a professional podcast person, we're just trying to have a chat here. It doesn't have to be anything. And I think we got a lot of authentic content uh, in this conversation. So I'm very excited. Um, and if you know, there is something I don't do the right way in social media in posting, let me know. I'll uh, absolutely, you know, use feedback to get it right. So um, I think my goal is to uh, get these kind of things out there. And as both of us get more time, uh, you know, time is sometimes a big pressing factor for uh, <laughs> both of us. So, um, you know, if we get time, maybe we'll get more organized and find a way to sync up on, you know, podcasts of these lines. So I am so inspired by this and I wish I was in person in Orlando. Seems like the weather is great there. Uh, the weather is Memphis also comparable today, but uh, hopefully things get back on normal terms in Orlando, the Disney World and other places where people come down. Uh, and I'd love to visit you in person one of these days. You are such an inspiration. Uh, thank, you. thank you so much for giving all this time. Um, and you can hold on for a second as I stop recording. <laughs>